as the progressive left, communism, socialism, values and ideas is on the rise, shouldn't you be behind Trump? Or do you believe they're equally bad? I, I believe that whether they're equally bad or not, Trump is not the antidote to it. Trump is emboldening socialism and communism. Trump will make socialism and communism come, uh, become more popular in this country. He, uh, socialism is on the rise in America today to a large extent as a response to Trump. Trump doesn't help the cause. Trump's lays the foundation for the left to take over and emboldens them and, and, and encourages people to support them. So no, Trump is not the solution to the left. Trump is almost as bad as many on the left. And in his nature, in his character, and in his policies, he emboldens and encourages the left to do what they do. So, I really, really, I mean, too many people out there are blinded by the hatred of the left and are willing to form coalitions with anybody in order to attack the left. But then what will happen when you succeed? The left is crushed. Who you won't have a voice anymore because you will be not a capitalist. Who the hell? You're not a capitalist. You're a supporter of Donald Trump. You are on the Donald Trump bandwagon. You won't have a voice for capitalism. And then you will leave the statists on the right free of all opposition. We won't be able to be opposition because we were with them. We formed a coalition with them. So you... You make yourself impotent for the future battle we're going to have with the right by getting into bed with the right in order to defeat the left. But let me be clear, the long-term danger from the right is just as deep as the long-term danger from the left. There are no communists today in, the, in, in politics, just like there are no fascists today in politics. There are people leaning towards communism, certainly towards socialism on the left, towards their, you know, but even the socialists, they're not real socialists, there are very few of them who would actually nationalize the means of production, but they're leaning in that direction, they're moving in that direction. It's true there are no fascists on the right, and Trump is not a fascist, but he's leaning in that direction. He floats in that direction. He legitimizes that direction. And you're telling me that you would get into bed with somebody leaning fascist in order to defeat somebody leaning socialist, leaning communist? No, no, no. The only coalition you could form is an anti-Trump, anti-left coalition. A coalition that says never socialism and never Trump. Never socialism and never fascism and anybody leaning towards authoritarianism and fascism. That's the only coalition you can form. A coalition based on freedom. Not a coalition based on, I'm just going to violate some of your rights some of the time. And long term, I want to violate more of your rights, but right now we're fighting socialists, so I'll only violate a few of your rights in the meantime. Give me a break. You do not, when, when, when the evils are evil, you do not choose the lesser of two evils. When the evils are really evil, and when the when it's hard to tell what the less of two evils is because you don't know the long-term consequences. And when one evil like Trump is going to bring about the other evil, which is socialism, I mean, look at what he did this week. Two trillion dollar, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, infrastructure plan for the US government. Two trillion dollars. You want to get in bed with that? To fight whom? Who's opposed to it? Who are you going to fight? AOC? AOC loves the idea. This is straight out of MMT. Let's print up $2 billion and do it. Oh, yeah, I know. Trillion, not Billy. I know Trump says he's going to do it private-public partnerships. That's the worst. It's worse to do public-private partnerships than have the government do it by themselves. 
Because public-private partnerships is fascism. It's the road to fascism. It means there is no private enterprise anymore. It means government is involved in even in the private property, even in where there's supposedly an island of freedom, private property. Now government is involved there. I was fighting socialists before some of you were born. And I was fighting socialists before Trump was elected. And I will continue to fight socialists till my last days. But what Trump has done is emboldened the socialists and expanded their influence. And if you can't see that, that you're blind. That Trump makes an AOC possible. You're blind. You fight the socialists and you fight Trump. You fight statism. You fight evil wherever it happens to be, left or right. You don't team up with Stalin to fight Hitler. Massive mistake that FDR made. And you don't team up with Hitler to fight Stalin. Sometimes evils are evil, and you don't choose the lesser of two. And I think Trump is evil enough so that you don't work with him, even against the common enemy like socialism. And, and particularly when you see the kind of rise of white nationalism and racism and anti-Semitism all in the last few years, all, you know, under the big umbrella that is the supporters of Trump. I, I'm not going in that umbrella or anywhere near that umbrella. And I'm going to call that umbrella what it is, which is anti-freedom, anti-individualism, anti-America. I mean, Trump is an anti-American president. The liberals are trying to put statism over by stealth without letting the country realize what road they are taking to what ultimate goal. And while such a policy is reprehensible, there is something much more reprehensible. The policy of the so-called conservatives who believe in compromise and who are trying to defend freedom by stealth. If the liberals are afraid to identify their program by its proper name, if they advocate every specific step, measure, policy, and principle of statism, but squirm and twist themselves into semantic pretzels with such euphemisms as the welfare state, the New Deal, the New Frontier, they still preserve a semblance of logic, if not of morality. It is the logic of a con man who cannot afford to let his victims discover his purpose. Besides, most liberals are afraid to let themselves discover that what they, that what they advocate is statism. They do not want to know or to admit that they are the champions of dictatorship and slavery. So they evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is evil. Immoral as this might be, what is one to think of men who evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is good? What is the moral stature of those who are afraid to know or to proclaim that they are the champions of freedom? What is the courage and the integrity of those who outdo their enemies in smearing, misrepresenting, spitting at and apologizing for their own ideals? What is the rationality of those who expect to trick people into freedom, cheat them into justice, pull them into progress, con them into preserving their rights, and while indoctrinating them with statism, put one over on, on them and let them wake up in a perfect capitalist society some morning. Such, unfortunately, are a great many of today's conservatives.